every person can be a force for good. Free to forge his own destiny. The world is introduced to the Superman. We open there. We open up on the city skyline of Metropolis, and it's quiet, and it's beautiful, and the sun is out, and everything looks lavish. And we hear narration from Bruce Wayne's friend, Jack. Now, I don't know exactly what he would say because I haven't really thought this through. This is just me being pretty spontaneous. But Jack would say something along the lines of Bruce Wayne and his family and his lineage and his heritage. And you're a good man, Bruce, and your parents love you, but you've dealt with a lot of hurt and pain and anger. But you're a good guy and all this kind of stuff. And then we slowly transition into an office building, which is Wayne Financial. And we see Jack talking to Bruce in a small little office space area and Jack is you know wrapping up his speech to Bruce Wayne and then we see Bruce Wayne just basically shrug off what Jack just said to him we look at Bruce and he's still being pretty stoic but the look on his face and in his eyes you can kind of tell that he's listening to what Jack has to say he's taking it to heart but he really doesn't want to show his feelings so he kind of shrugs off what Jack has to say and Bruce Wayne immediately just starts talking into the financials of the company. The technology needs to be better. We need to compete with LexCorp. He talks about LexCorp a little bit and all of this. And then all of a sudden you hear a loud bang. We follow Bruce Wayne from a behind shot. He opens the door and he walks into the office space area, the wider area of the offices, and everyone's panicking and running towards the window and looking out the window, and Bruce Wayne looks out the window and he sees the terraformer and it's destroying shit, and then Bruce Wayne starts to panic and he's like, everyone needs to get out of the office, and everyone's screaming and running, and Bruce Wayne looks at Jack, and then Bruce looks at Jack and he says, get everyone out of the building, get everyone out of here, and then Jack is starting to help Bruce get people out and evacuate people, he's like, helping Bruce out and they're panicking and Bruce is kind of panicking but he's maintaining his cool but everybody else is running in a frenzy and trampling over each other and then the windows bust and all this kind of craziness. Bruce Wayne is, is helping evacuate people from the office building running from floor to floor helping everyone that he can. Jack is doing the same thing. He's staying by Bruce's side as much as Bruce says to Jack, you need to get out of here, you need to go. And Jack's like, I'm not leaving you, all that kind of stuff. So then the building starts to collapse. They run down the stairwell as fast as they can. Some people get left behind and crumbled by the rubble. And Bruce is witnessing all of this. And he tried, like, let's say he tries to save a woman in the stairwell, but then the rubble comes and she's panicking. And then she, and the rubble collapses on this woman in front of him. And this woman, just, all these people are dying right before his very eyes. And these are his employees, people he cares about. And Jack damn near gets killed, but he doesn't. So then they go outside. They all make a, a majority of people make it outside. Bruce and Jack make it outside. Bruce is witnessing all this destruction go on. So then Bruce is like, yeah, take these people over here in this area. And then, you know, Jack's like, I'm not leaving you. And then Bruce is like, you need to listen to me and all this stuff. Bruce Wayne runs to the parking garage, which is kind of away from the building where after everything, you know, crumbled. He goes into the parking garage. He gets in that, that Jeep that we saw in BVS at the beginning. passenger seat freaking out and looking at the destruction take place and he's you know and Bruce is like calm down and he's driving and then just like in BVS he, he can pull up where there's uh, a bit of a jam because all these people are blocking him so then Bruce Wayne gets out of the car Jack 
gets into the Jeep and he honks the horn and he's yelling for people to get out the way and then the crowd, they spread out. Jack puts his foot on the gas. He drives through the crowd, catching up to Bruce Wayne, but then he kind of can't see because all the smoke. Then we cut into 18 months later, somewhere in the Indian Ocean. Lex Luthor is going to be standing on the beach with all of the townspeople. Lois Lane is going to show up in a car, approach Lex Luthor. Lex is going to be all friendly and wave Lois Lane over to him. Lois Lane approaches him. And she's interviewing him, and Lex is saying something to her like, Oh, I hear you wanted an interview. That's why you came all the way down here. And Lois is like, I go wherever the story goes. Then you got, you know, these people who dive into the ocean, and they grab the thing that the kryptonite is in, and they bring it up to the surface. And Lex is going off about how he's rebuilding Metropolis, and how he's working with Bruce to accomplish that. And Lois is like, yeah, you and Bruce have put in billions of dollars to rebuild Metropolis. But then what are your intentions on getting this finding that you're looking for right now? And he's like, I don't know. I just want to be able to learn about these Kryptonians and where they come from. And I need to know more about Superman. And then Lois Lane kind of gets worried about this, but she doesn't say anything. Then the people bring the Kryptonite object onto the shore. He cracks it open and he looks at this green stuff glowing and Lois Lane is kind of concerned. No one knows what it is. Lois Lane is like, what is it? Lex Luthor is like, I just want to bridge our two worlds together. I want to understand this Kryptonian versus hating this Kryptonian. Is it really surprising that the most powerful man in the world should be a figure of controversy? To have an individual engaging in the state level interventions should give us all pause. We're talking about a being whose very existence challenges our own sense of priority in the universe. An alien among us. We're not alone. Then I want to show some scenes where we're really getting involved with the public who hates and loves Superman. Wally is going to some meetings where there is a hate group that talks about Superman. Bruce Wayne is watching these people and it's affecting him and he's learning about these people's stories and we have Wally there who is really having a lot of hatred for Superman. So we, I just want to illustrate that a bit more and actually set up like there are stables of people. There's the hate group, there's the love group, there's groups that are in between, and there are protesters and they're all like, we hate Superman. Let the record show that this committee holds him responsible. He'll never answer to you. He answers to no one. Not even I think to God. What they're talking about is the stuff that happened in Metropolis and the death toll and is Superman friend or foe and he needs to come here and then you have all of these people who are like we need to have a government take this alien out of our planet and, and then we have people who are like no he saved us, it saved us. if it wasn't for him Zod would have killed us. Must there be a Superman? There is. People hate what they don't understand. But they see what you do, and they know who you are. You don't owe this world a thing. You never did. So then in our next scene, we are at LexCorp, and we see a meeting taking place between Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor. They're sitting in an office and they're just having a conversation about working together and rebuilding Metropolis, how much money they're investing, the construction crews they have to hire and all that financial stuff. And then we also get character traits from each one of them because when there's a press conference taking place and the press wants to know that hey you guys were rivals at one point and competing billionaires and now since this tragedy happened you guys are working together 
And Lex Luthor is more of a showboater where he is charming on the microphone. He's charismatic. The audience in the movie loves him, but Bruce Wayne can see right through his bullshit. He's doing the right thing, but he's just doing this because of his ego. And Bruce Wayne, when they ask him questions, he's more reserved. He just gets to the point. He's very cool and laid back and calculated. He knows what's going on. And then you can have the press ask them a question about Superman. Like, what do you think about Superman? And then this will illustrate how Batman feels about it. He won't quite say how he feels, but just knowing what happened in the opening scene and the look on his face in this moment, we know exactly how he feels. Whereas Lex Luthor is praising Superman, saying this man is a god who came from the sky. This guy was just trying to protect us. And yes, there were human casualties, but I think this guy is a savior and we need to give him a chance. So then we get into our next scene with Clark Kent at the Daily Planet in a board meeting talking to Perry White and the other colleagues in the office. Lois Lane burst in pretty much like how it plays out in the movie except we're taking out the bullet stuff. And she says, I do not trust Lex Luthor. And she wants to run an investigation and a report on him. And then, you know, Perry White gets all snarky. He's like, what kind of report, Lois? And she's like, I want him, I want to have him tailed. I want to have private investigators and all this stuff. And she's going off on a tangent. And Perry Mason's like, that's too expensive, Lois. You need to focus on the people who have lost their homes and their jobs due to the Superman attack and all of this stuff. And then you have Clark watching everything that's going on and then after perry white and lois lane have a bit of an argument back and forth she walks away with clark looking at her in a particular way then in our next scene it plays out pretty much how it played out in the movie lois lane is at her apartment she is looking over videotapes and journals of evidence she has gathered against lex luthor she ends up in the bathtub clark comes home and she's just concerned about him talking about there's all these people that hate you and these people that fear you and then clark's like i don't care what people are saying about me i know what my purpose is but she's like i'm worried about you. You, you 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 let's have something profound in this movie where she says like yeah you're a god and you may think you're invincible but you're not i'm worried about someone one day will come and hurt you or something like that and then she's just scared for him then she can also say she's also scared for herself and it worries her and it bothers her and then clark says well do you want to be with me or not and then she's like i love you and all this kind of stuff and then he gets in the tub and we have this nice moment then in our next scene, we are at the Gotham City Harbor where a drug deal is taking place. Some criminals are trying to sell a large supply of heroin to a potential customer. But the deal goes south because Batman shows up. After all of this destruction that Batman has left in his wake, killing each of these criminals, he reaches the last criminal and the criminal's car flips over. The criminal tries to get out of the car on the driver's side, but he's too weak. He's got blood on his face. He's laying on his back. Batman pulls the Batmobile up behind the wreckage, gets out of the Batmobile, and slowly walks towards the criminal, pulling his branding tool out of his utility belt. find the wrecked vehicle and then they find the criminal strung up on a wall with the bat brand tattooed on his flesh then we have our lex luthor scene where he's not playing basketball he's doing something else i don't know what he's like getting out of a board meeting then these government officials walk in what's your wish list i need to get General Zod's body. He releases Zod's body. He's experimenting on it with the green crystal stuff and he determines that, okay, this crystal stuff can weaken Kryptonian cells. 
Then we can have a little moment where right after Lex Luthor is experimenting on Zod's body with the kryptonite. He's leaving his office. We have Lois Lane tailing him, trying to figure out what he's up to. She follows Lex Luthor to the Genesis chamber ship. Then Lex Luthor, same thing, goes into the ship. And then the ship talks. And he's just talking to the ship. And we don't know what's going to happen. Now Lex Luthor has access to Zod's body. He has access to this kryptonite that can destroy Kryptonian cells. And he has access to this ship. The Kryptonian Archive contains knowledge from a hundred thousand different worlds. Good. Teach me. Lex Luthor has gotten a hold of General Zod's armor. We have Lex Luthor who rebuilds General Zod's suit, adds some modifications to it, takes the kryptonite crystal, turns it into an energy substance that is built inside of the suit and flows throughout it. That's the judge. One man decides who lives. How is that justice? Talk to me. Help me change it. You know what stops him? A fist. New rules. We're criminals, Alfred. We've always been criminals. Nothing's changed. Oh, yes it has, sir. Everything's changed. This is how a democracy works. We talk to each other. Superman actually shows up. He flies in and he's talking to the people and he's saying, look, I'm from Krypton. This isn't my world. I, I don't know what to do. I hear people saying this about me. I hear people saying that about me. Just have a sympathetic moment with, with Superman where he just pour, pours out his heart to the public. I did the best I can to protect you from Zod and all this stuff. And then Wally could be and just kind of curse Superman out. And each and every time, you know, they pipe wally down and, and then superman starts speaking and you have some people who are on his side some people who are against him and then superman is talking to lex and and lex is praising superman like don't listen to these people these people are all against you and he's like i'm your friend and all this stuff and bruce wayne is there but he doesn't talk to superman he's just there and he's angry Lois Lane will interview Bruce Wayne and say, well, what is your stance on this whole Superman debate? And Bruce Wayne says, well, you know, if Superman really cared about us, he would come out here and talk to these people. He would try to understand where they're coming from and all this stuff. Instead, he's off in other countries trying to make up for the wrongs that he did. And, and he doesn't think that this guy is a good guy. And, you know, so Lois Lane is putting all this stuff together. And then we can have some moments where Clark and Lois Lane are fighting because Lois is, like, buried deep into all this. Like, she's dealing with her emotions where she doesn't trust Lex. She knows that he has this substance. He's getting access to the Genesis ship. He's got General Zod's suit and all of this stuff. And she's, she knows this and she keeps it from Clark. She doesn't tell him. And... Clark can have a scene where he, you know, he's sneaking up on her, trying to be nice, and then, you know, they have a fight because he accidentally somehow looks at her notes and sees that, oh, she's keeping all this information from me, and then she's just yelling at him like, listen, I love you, but I'm scared for you, and I'm scared for me too, and I don't know what to do, and I love you, and all this, and he's just like, well, what do you want me to do? You want me to walk away? Let that build up over time. So then when we get to the final conclusion, you know, Clark walks out on her because he's like, you know, I do want to protect you, and I love you and I don't want you to, don't I don't want to see you hurt like this and all this stuff so he walks away from her Bruce Wayne decides to attend Lex Luthor's Metropolis rebuild celebration he tells Alfred hey, I have my sources my sources tell me that Lex Luthor is harboring all of this Kryptonian technology and I need to find out what he's doing with it you seriously think I would do business with someone without knowing their dirty little secrets we get to the party, Clark Kent and Lois Lane are both attending the party, but they're not speaking to each other. Lex Luthor during the party walks up to Lois and he says, are you gathering all the information that you need? So it seems like he knows that he's being followed, but you know, 
she's like, yeah, I just want to know exactly what's going on here in your offices. And then he says, like, would you like to know? I'm up to lots of no good and all this stuff. Then we can also have our encounter where Clark interviews Bruce Wayne. And at this moment, Clark does not know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. And Bruce Wayne does not know that Clark is Superman. What's your position, the Bat Vigilante in Gotham? Civil liberties are being trampled on in your city. Good people living in fear. Maybe it's the Gotham City in me. We just have a bad history with freaks dressed like clowns. Later on during the party, Lois and Bruce are having a conversation about Lex. They both agree that Lex is not to be trusted. Lois tells Bruce about how Lex is finding all of these Kryptonian remnants and she has no idea what he's going to be doing with them, but she is concerned. Bruce Wayne plays dumb like he doesn't know what she's talking about. Lois tells Bruce, if you end up getting any information on Lex, can you please let me know about it? Bruce Wayne agrees. Right, you got the kitchens on your right. To the left. Right in front of you, that's where you want to be. Jack is at this party, he's standing there, a mysterious woman walks over to him and whispers in his ear. Jack looks at this mysterious woman and nods his head yes. Once the woman walks away, he walks away from the party into another room that is private and Lex Luthor is in the room. Jack sees Lex in the room, his response is, I've done everything you've asked of me. I've given up the identity of the Batman. I told you that it's Bruce Wayne. Now will you let my family go? And then Lex's response is, well, yeah, you've done everything I've asked of you, but our plan isn't complete yet. We are only in the final stages, and you play a critical role in that. Then before Jack can even say anything, two goons enter the room and put a bag over his head. Jack is howling and screaming for his life while Lex is watching with a smirk on his face. The goons tie Jack's hands behind his back and force him to exit the room through a back door. So Lex Luthor invites Superman over to his laboratory so Superman can get a first-hand look at what he is up to. Lex is happy that Superman is there. All of the staff members are happy Superman is there. They're all clapping for Superman like, yeah, we love you. And then Lex is like, yeah, we love you here. We just want to understand you. So Lex is going off on his tangent as he's guiding Superman to a specific area where he has all of his stuff. And he's just gloating and... and, and 
egging Superman on like you're a great guy I don't know why people hate you and I'm here for you and the reason why I've gathered all this stuff is to better understand you and have us connect and bond and we can better understand each other and all this stuff so as he's talking about all of that they go in the elevator they go down to a certain floor they come out of the elevator and then Lex goes to this door that has a key pad on it and a handprint and then he opens the door and he goes in and this is where we see this chamber room and then this is how it would be drawn out. So then they walk forward and as they're walking forward there are these green neon lights that are coming from these chambers and the Superman all of a sudden starts to feel weak. He's like, I don't feel very good, similar to how he felt in Man of Steel. He's starting to become weak. He, he collapses to the ground saying, what is this? And then this is where Lex reveals his true self to Superman. He kneels down. I've been trying to discover how to destroy you. And then that's when Superman collapses and he passes out. While all this is going down... We have Bruce Wayne. He's got the info, plugs it in his computer, but it is encrypted. So he needs to figure out a way to hack into it. So he's just wasting time messing around with that. We're going to harvest your blood. Identified the host as General Zod of Candor. their fortune trading with the French. Pelts, skins. They were hunters. going to have Batman showing him going to LexCorp, breaking into the facility, knocking out some guards, hiding in the shadows and all that kind of stuff. Then in the final moment of the sequence, he reaches the area where the suit and the kryptonite is. He walks up to it and the suit has this green glow to it. Then we have the moment like in the actual movie, Lex Luthor is driving his bike to the location and the bullets and he's witnessing the aftermath and then he watches the tape and he knows that Batman has taken the suit and has taken the kryptonite, but Lex Luthor looks at this evidence with a smile on his face.
Lois Lane cradles Clark or Superman in her arms. She starts rocking back and forth and she starts telling Superman or Clark how much she loves him, how much he means to her, and she's sorry for keeping secrets from him. She just wants him to be okay and she was just concerned about his safety and hers. Superman puts his arm over Lois's shoulder. Lois tries to carry the weight of Superman, but she's stumbling a little bit. Superman is trying his best to walk out of the chamber, but he's a little weak. But they manage to make it out of the chamber slowly but surely. And as they're walking, Superman tries to speak to Lois and says, I'm sorry for not trusting you and I'm sorry for not believing you. And Lois says, it's okay, you can thank me once we get out of here. Then in our next moment, we are in the lobby area of Lex Laboratories. The elevator doors open and out walks Superman and Lois Lane, nonchalant, acting like there is nothing wrong with this picture. And as they are walking towards the front door, a few security guards spot them. They start shooting at Superman. Superman deflects the bullets, protecting Lois Lane. You can see that the bullets do affect Superman a little bit because he's not fully restored. He uses his ice breath to freeze the individual's guns. He and Lois go out the front door. And as they're outside, Superman carries Lois and flies away.
Ministre. Batman falls to the ground, Superman flies out, and he's on 100% offense. Batman's not even on defense. He can't even defend himself now. He's too weak. Superman's just wailing on him with all of his rage, and he's screaming. And he's like, as he's beating up Batman and screaming, he's like, I didn't want to hurt these people. I didn't want to hurt anyone and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, why do you people hate me? And he's just taking out all of that rage and that anger that he's built and he's taking it out on Batman and he's just wailing on Batman to the point where it looks like you know when Robocop is turned into scrap metal. Batman is getting wrecked and his suit is falling apart. Superman grabs Batman by the neck, lifts him up in the air and then choke slams him, pins him to the ground. Superman's eyes turn bloodshot red and he says enough! Superman pauses. His eyes still bloodshot red. We hear the beaming from his eyes and Batman looks dead in Clark Kent's eyes and he says kill me kill me like you killed those people in Metropolis kill me like you killed my friend Jack kill me like how you took all those lives from all of those innocent people you think you're a god you're not a god you're not even a man and all that kind of stuff and then Superman calms down and he looks around and he hears people screaming and he's witnessing all of this destruction around him. And he sees all of these civilians scared for their lives. And then he looks at all of the buildings toppled and all the destruction. Then his eyes go back to normal. Batman's still on the ground. Superman just looks up at the people talking to the people in Batman. And he says, I didn't mean for any of this. I didn't want any of this to happen. Some of this is my fault, and I'm sorry I wasn't there for most of you. Basically, some speech to where he's pouring out his heart. He's talking to Batman. He's talking to the people. He's trying to just let everything out and say, I'm not the enemy. I'm not trying to be the enemy. I'm sorry I destroyed these lives, but I'm doing the best that I can and all of this stuff. And Batman is just laying there listening to what this guy has to say. Then Superman, once he's done with his speech, looks down at Batman, and he extends his hand, and he says, Look, Lex Luthor is up to all of this. He spills the beans. He says, Lex Luthor captured me. He created some sort of creature that looks like me and it's not me and all of this kind of stuff. Batman says, why should I believe you? And Clark Kent says, because if I was a bad guy, you would already be dead or somewhere along those lines. Then Superman flies off and then Batman's laying on the ground. He picks himself up as he's trying to collect himself. Take you in without breaking you, which is more than you deserve.
No, sir, you don't. Oh, God. Batman whooping people's ass while Lex runs away and hides in the elevator trying to get away. Batman takes down the goons in the labs and in the facility. Superman takes down Bizarro and Bizarro is unconscious. Lex hears some commotion and gunfire outside the door. We have a nice tense moment. Then the lights in the facility cut off. It's pitch black. He's about to brand Lex like, you son of a bitch, you killed my friend, you're the cause for all of this, and he's in complete rage, and he's about to do it, and Lex is saying, yeah, do it, Batman, this is what you really are, and all this kind of stuff, and then Superman comes in behind Batman and touches him on the shoulder and says, this is what Lex wants, don't do this, this isn't who you are, this is what you've become, don't become what people want you to be, or don't become what people made you to be, some speech like that. So we can have a tense moment where, where Lex is kind of egging on Batman, where Superman's trying to calm Batman down, and Batman has the brand in his hand, he's about to do it. We fight, we kill, we betray one another, but we can rebuild. We can do better. We will. We have to. Lex Luthor in a cell in his prison uniform and a guard is taunting him and Lex Luthor looks at the guard and he says, you have no idea what's coming. If you were to see the things that I have seen, you would be afraid. We fade to Bizarro and he is in a similar cell like Lex, but it has a green glow around it. And as Lex is saying these words, we're zooming in closely on Bizarro's face. And as Lex is still talking, we zoom in on Bizarro's eyes, and it cuts back to the credits. We see 
Clark Kent on top of his roof and he's doing something. He's fixing the roof and Bruce Wayne shows up and he's like, you need a hand. And then Clark comes down and he looks at Bruce and he says something back to him where he's being a bit of a smart ass. Like, yeah, you, you think you can do what I do and all this kind of stuff. Then Bruce says to him in a similar fashion, oh, I can do what you do, but I can do it better. And then, you know, Clark says something back to him where, oh, in that last fight we had, um, who won that? Somewhere along those lines where you can tell they're, they're friendly with each other and they can bring up all that stuff. You know, so it's you can tell that they're cool and they're being a little snarky towards each other. But then Bruce looks at Clark, extends his hand. Clark Kent shakes it. And then Clark comes back with some remarks saying that you can trust me and whenever you need me, I'll be there for you and all this kind of stuff. Just showing them become friends. Then the movie ends.